Hi there. Thanks for tuning into Album Rebrews. Please note, we do drink while recording this podcast, and if you choose to drink along at home, we encourage you to do so responsibly. Enjoy the episode. Cheers. Hey, everybody. You're listening to Album Rebrews. It's a podcast where we pair our favorite drinks with our favorite albums. I'm Logan. I'm Sarah. I'm Zach. And today we are talking about a very fun album. Um, I've picked this one, so I get to introduce it. It is The First by Willow, a.k.a. Willow Smith. And today, because of one of the songs on the album called Warm Honey, we have done a Jack Daniels honey sort of mule. So it's uh, the Jack Daniels honey, a little bit of ginger beer, and some lime. Um, Fellas, let's get into it. Well, cheers. I thought it was called Warm Honey because of how warm it is in here right now. That could also... Well, when I was thinking about... uh, The the person who picks the album is always going to pick the drink pairing. Um, And I thought about, oh, Warm Honey. What if we did a hot toddy? But uh, it's June and we're in an apartment with no air conditioning. So it seemed like a really bad idea. The the hot toddy on top of the hot apartment tea that's a hot body (laughs) (laughs) um this album is really cool though i'm excited to hear both of your takes on it um as far as like you know my familiarity with it i just listened to it in college and kind of was like i want to talk about it but i am curious to hear if either of you have any experience with this album or willow smith in general all, aside from whip my hair. <laughs> all I well, yeah, I mean, all I knew about Will Smith before you said we were gonna listen to this album was she's Will Smith's daughter mm-hmm. and she had like a teen party song. Yeah. In 2011? 12? Yeah. Was it 2012 yeah. already? I think 2012. Uh, goodness. I don't remember when it was. Uh, but yeah, I mean I remember hearing that in high school and being mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, Will Smith's kid is also being weird like Will mm-hmm. Smith's kids mm-hmm. tend to do. <laughs> And I was so surprised that, like, this album was good. It's as good as it is. And it's so, like, introspective. And there's, we'll we'll continue to talk about this, but there's so much, like, uh, so much pining for, like, higher consciousness. And I'm like, this this album came out on her 17th birthday. So presumably she had, like, written these songs maybe, like, age 14, 15, 16. Yeah. It, I, well... I don't I don't want to burn her too much right off the bat, but it feels like like baby's first like psychedelic experience, the album. It kind of <laughs> does feel that way a little bit. It, uh, it feels like a, like someone who spent a lot of time on Tumblr. Maybe smoked weed a little bit in high school while learning. Well, not while learning how to drive. That's wildly irresponsible, but you know what I mean. <laughs> what about you, Zach? It was not what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw a lot of reviews that were, like, comparing it to, like, 90s singers. Yeah. I thought that was an interesting, There are parts like, of it that get really, like, swanky yeah. vocally. Um, which was I really like cool. a lot of the classical instrumentation. instrumentation. Mm-hmm. Like, there aren't any drums until, like, the seventh song, mm-hmm. which is, like, an interesting... Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of, like, acoustic guitar and, like, plucky violin. And I remember reading that that was a big push for this album was... Uh, Willow had one uh, full release before this. This is her second album. Two albums by the age of 17, naturally. Um, But a big thing was her first album was largely like computer generated uh, instruments. And Mm -hmm. I don't know, just stuff in Ableton maybe. Um, But for this one, she really made a push towards like learning music theory, learning how to (laughs) hit the mic with a drink. (laughs) (laughs) I'm realizing now the ice was maybe a little. (laughs) We got we got like Christmas shakers. Yeah, you guys are you guys. uh, That'll be the signal to drink along at home when you hear ice cubes. Take a sip. (laughs) Um, But like I was saying, she. She just did a lot of um, instrument homework and is there there aren't a lot of people credited on this album. She's like the primary uh, musician. I was looking at the two. Do you know if she played any of the instruments on the album? I believe so. Yeah. She talks in an interview about learning to play guitar. And I wonder if she is the acoustic guitar player for a lot of it. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't figure out who the 
pianist on this album was, but I was I would have been really impressed if at age 17 Willow Smith was like doing the piano work on this album. There's well, a don't think piano she, interlude, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but it was very good. It's like almost feels like a broke piece of music. Which I believe she played. I'm I'm looking at the credits now. Um the first two credited are Chloe and Halle Bailey. They're both featured on a song. Um, Halle Berry is on this album? No, <laughs> I did the same double take. No, they're they're a, a, like a musical duo who, fun fact, got signed to Beyonce's label. Exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we have Devante Hines, who is the person behind Blood Orange. Oh, that was the exciting thing I learned. A band that I, I love so much. Um, so he is on one of these songs. And then it says there's an engineer, but then the other people... The other three people credited, I'm not sure why she's listed three times, but um, Willow Smith is listed three times on allmusic.com as the primary artist. Yeah, I like all music because it's just a big aggregate for artist credits and and the people behind the albums as far as the engineering goes or Mm -hmm. or producing goes. Um, And it's, if you're not familiar, a cool way to kind of dig into the meat of uh, the people who put albums together. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, for some reason, Willow Smith is credited three times as three different artists on here. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, it's a, maybe it's an alter ego. Weird. Do you want to talk about the songs that you liked on this album? Yeah, I would love to. Um, so one of the first songs that I was most intrigued to talk about or most excited to talk about was the opening track called Boy. And a lot of this album is dealing with uh, love and with relationships and with um, the challenges and kind of the adolescent learning um, going into adulthood that relationships can provide. And this one I thought was not silly, but I really liked a lot of the lyrics in it when she it it, it kind of sounds like she's um, writing a letter to her mom about this like sad boy, capital S, capital B, who um, this you. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> he uh, he likes Quentin Tarantino. He's sad. He plays guitar. He has anxiety attacks. and um it it sounds like a very gen Z love song it it does. And I think a lot of her vocabulary feels very Gen Z. Yeah. Like, uh, putting whack in, like, this transcendental, like, yeah. love song. I Just using that word feels... I Maybe this is just because she's a young artist mm-hmm. and, and her vocabulary is sort of tied to her age. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's is. Um, but I feel like it cements it as, like, a... When, did this come out in 2017? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, like, cements it as an album that came out that year. Yeah. You know? It's like, if you put lit, if you mm-hmm. said, like, something was lit <laughs> in a song, you'd be like, oh, well, obviously that's, like, a mid-2010 song. Yeah. 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 And she really, like, leans into kind of the teenage angst of it, which I like a lot. Like, when she says, how come this is whack? Like, it, you really hear it. You can't miss it. Um, and that kind of carries on through the rest of the album I love it I think it's such a sweet opener and I had uh one sort of sonic element that I thought was impressive hey mom I met a boy he's super sad but I think that I love him is that bad it's just such a sweet opener and such a good introduction to sort of this like Willow V2. It yeah, I mean, it doesn't really um clue you into how weird the production gets later on in this mm-hmm. album. So it is kind of like a nice like I want to hear your take on Yeah, I mean later. it like sets the mood for uh using string instruments. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't like betray that this album is going to get a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I mean and and it totally sets the lyrical vibe. Oh, like, totally. Very young, very uh like learning about n- uh, like mind expanding mm-hmm. uh <laughs> uh experiences. Um yeah, I mean I think I think tonally it really sets the scene for the rest of this album. Yeah, totally. It gave me Fleet Fox vibes when I first heard it. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is like very relaxing. This, mm. this puts me in a good mood. Mm-hmm. I feel that. So we go through the album and the second track, it's a weird choice for a second track, but it's just a musical interlude. 
Uh, the title of it is An Awkward Life of an Awkward Girl. Again, very Gen Z. Um, but it's just a uh, piano for like two minutes. Does it do the finger thing that I quite don't understand? The finger <laughs> thing. Is... <laughs> so for those of us playing along at home, um, Zach has put his pointer <laughs> okay. fingers together. The way that people on the internet do when they want to say that they're shy. <laughs> um, it might. Yeah. Okay. You can picture that. It's awkward. You know what? Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. And then we move on to the song And Contentment. And I remember listening to this for the first time and going like, whoa. Because it <laughs> it really starts off strong, like just as a song setting what the message of the song is going to be. It starts off by saying happiness and contentment comes from zero comparison and 100% personal experience. I was like, damn, for, that was for someone who wrote this at like 16. Fun fact, that was a quote in her yearbook. Is it? No. But oh. it certainly sounds like it. <laughs> I, mean, I was like, that would have been badass. But isn't that such like an anti-teenage thing to write about? Like, uh, rather than, I don't know, I, I picture myself in high school and you're always comparing yourself to people. You're always on the internet. You're always comparing. Um, and so like this early in the album to kind of, Drop some tea like that. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go back to Boy really quick because there was yeah. a lyric I wanted to talk about. Yeah, for sure. Where uh, she's explaining uh, she comes from a cluster of super bright stars. Yeah. And the, uh, I mean, the analogy is that uh, they're up there and they're exploring the galaxies. But she's also a member of the Smith family. Yeah. Daughter she has of very famous parents. Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I... I would imagine that some of her upbringing was a little bit, uh, um, uh, oh no, I'm blanking on the words. Oh, I need the perfect word and I'm, it's not, it's not. Give me the vibe. Give she had a vibe. better upbringing than a lot of people do. Very privileged. Uh, yeah, she had quite a privileged upbringing. So I imagine that some of her, her, um, maturity is coming from the fact that she probably has had a, uh, enlightening upbringing yeah and i'm also sure it's weird to be dating people as someone a who's famous herself but b who has such famous parents oh, like surely. it's got to be intimidating yeah. for any potential partner to like kind of enter into that household you like come over for dinner and, and it's like, like a mansion <laughs> <laughs> they have like a, a private chef there for the evening Ooh, that's like literally the... will smith yeah <laughs> and I'm, I'm surprised by like how humble a lot of this seems given her circumstances and how sort of down to earth well not down to earth because she talks about galaxies all the time but uh yeah i mean she she could have like just as easily kept writing whip my hair back and forth esque mm -hmm. songs. Yeah. And I I don't well, she's kind of an industry plant. Mm -hmm. To some degree. Yeah, that's true. If she was not Will Smith's daughter, would we even be like would we even know about this record? Right, right, right. right. I mean so certainly like, maybe wouldn't not. have access to like the same resources that someone who didn't have famous parents would have. Yeah, access. I think it is a a factor that you kind of have to consider. Mm -hmm. Like obviously she had the means to write these songs, get it professionally produced. Mm -hmm. She had professional oversight as mm -hmm. to the lyrical content and the composition. Um, Access to music lessons. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it's definitely a much more mature album than any other 17-year-old probably would have written. Yeah. I, I mean, I imagine that plays a lot into the lyrics. and. Uh, yeah. I mean, compared to previous like music that she had put out, it's definitely grown up mm. a bunch. Compared to, like, the the first album she put out had a song about Marceline the Vampire Queen from Adventure Time. Which, to be fair, is <laughs> a, it's a totally banger. appropriate. Yeah, it is. It is. But she's had some experience. She's no longer whipping her hair back and forth. She is no longer she's whipping her hair back whipping and forth. whipping her hair uh, to and fro. She is whipping her hair in and out of her third eye. Um, going back to the song And Contentment, something that I kind of noticed as a recurring theme on this album was the idea of, like, ego death. Um, the idea of kind of um, realizing your part in the whole of the world and giving up 
uh, she, she, the lyric I'm referencing is, I'm learning how to give in burning my own feelings. Um, and that gets brought up a lot more. And I think that's a very interesting thing to include, again, for someone to rather than be preoccupied in your own space, preoccupied with your own perspective and needs and wants. I don't think there are a lot of 17 year olds that are like writing songs about how they view themselves and how others view them. Yeah. Like, I don't think you're more self-centered than when you are a 17-year-old. Oh, totally. You don't have bills to pay. Mm -mm. All you do is uh, go to school Mm -hmm. and uh, maybe go to work. Lie. Uh Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't think there's a time when you have fewer uh, responsibilities. Yeah. And she's sitting here writing songs like, Oh, well, I got to make sure that uh, I'm not being too egotistical despite the fact that I come from this famous family. And Yeah. Um, I don't think I thought about her that way before I listened to this album. Mm-hmm. I think I had a, a much more negative, like, oh, she's Will Smith's kid. Because they're, they're just constantly, well, n- not Willow Smith, mm-hmm. but uh, definitely Jaden <laughs> Smith. I was going to bring this up as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for, for a minute there, like, it was all, let's make fun of Jaden Smith because of the weird shit he's tweeting, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> and it's like... A lot of these lyrics gave me, like, how can reality be real if my eyes aren't real vibes? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I think probably my perspective of her was swayed by that a little mm-hmm. bit. I was like, oh, okay, well, she's... Will Smith's kid, and the other one is tweeting weird third eye shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but, she's doing that to a degree here. Yeah, yeah. But a tasteful degree. It is it tasteful. tasteful. It yeah. is tasteful. Artistic. Yeah. yeah. There was one other lyric that I have in my notes in front of me about ego death, uh, which was in the song that inspired our drink today, the song Warm Honey. And there's a part at the end of that song where she just repeats and just keeps saying or singing, um, but then I realize I don't exist. And it's like, I I did not come to to terms with my place in the universe in that way at seventeen. Warm I, Honey had super trippy lyrics. Yeah, does. it took a lot of yoga classes and a lot of meditation <laughs> for me to get to that point. <laughs> I don't think I even really perceive that as a concept. What ego death existence? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and Willow Smith is sitting here telling me she does. Yeah. She's figured it all out already. I think there's a fine line between, like, deep philosophically and then, like, hashtag deep. Like, whoa, dude. Like, Very like, pretentious. Like, I'm 14 and this is deep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'm still not sure where, where this album falls for me. I It's really hard for me to not... It, it's hard for me to, like, separate her age from mm-hmm. the content of the album. Mm-hmm. Some of this feels very, like, teenage diary-ish. A little bit, Yeah. yeah. But I think I think a lot of when I was like looking at the lyrics again, because I've listened to this a bunch and I've I've known like like little hooks from it. But I sat down and I'm looking at the lyrics and I found myself being impressed by the level of um, like seeking enlightenment, seeking connection, seeking experience. Mm -hmm. Like I thought that was really cool and not something you see in a lot of Gen Z. That is a good point. I think seeking is a good way to look at it yeah. rather than just like being aware of philosophical content mm-hmm. when you're like 17. Like we all took like English classes when we were exposed to poetry. And, but I think it's definitely different to be seeking out these yeah. philosophical um, experiences yeah. rather than just being like, uh, we read Brave New World in English <laughs> class today. <laughs> I learned about Freud. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it feels like she's asking a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Song number four, right after And Contentment, is oh. another interlude. Yeah. Uh, with a really cool little concept. Um, but it's pronounced hoihi, and it's the Hawaiian word for respect. It's just kind of layers and layers and layers of these really, like, almost like guttural vocals, just like dancing on top of each other. It's such a cool word to vocalize, like the way she sings it. It's very... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parts of this album made me anxious when I was listening to it. Was this one of those parts? (laughs) This was one of them. And then um, one of the last songs, A Reason, A Romance, also has like Mm. a layered vocal Mm -hmm. thing that just, it was like acapella, just vocals. Mm -hmm. And... uh, 
it just made me really anxious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's this one's a a hefty scoop of song. She's talking about wanting to see the truth in the universe. She wants to see energy that that trees have. She wants to have real sensations. And like it's this is this is like one of those songs where it's like a bunch of questions. When I listen to music, I think a lot about uh like the motion of it, if that makes sense. Sure. Or like the way that uh, someone would look if they were moving along to it. Fun fact, in a lot of early language, um, the word for dance and music were the same thing because it was just implied. I've heard that this. if you were doing one, you were just doing the other. I love that. That's how they did music when it, you know, around Do the campfire. Do you know what the word is? A bunch of languages probably developed that way, right? Yeah, it's just like early, early language. They can mm, kind of. Mm. Just like caveman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they said ooh ah and it meant <laughs> dance and also music. And also Bang music. on rock. <laughs> <laughs> Play flute made out of femur. <laughs> <laughs> Drum made out of saber tooth tiger head. <laughs> there are some drums on this album that sound like they were made out of saber tooth tiger head. A little Yo, bit. That's yeah. my transition. In the yeah. next track. Oh no, yeah. What a good transition. Uh, kick of the segue. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what those drums are? I have no idea. I was like idea. trying to find out and I couldn't find out what they were. No, but they sound very like really shanty. organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the one that uh, Blood Orange Guy produced. Is Isn't it? No. Oh, no, sorry. I'm thinking of, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, we I are going to talk about we Oh, no. Skipped past Israel, I had we the skipped right past Israel. We skipped past Israel. We are going to talk about Oh, no. Don't worry. Um, but Israel, let's not skip over her. This one is kind of. Different. This one is a bit less, I'm going to use the word autobiographical. It feels like a lot of these songs are about uh, Willow's experiences and, you know, thoughts, feelings, perceptions, whatever. But this one's kind of like uh, got characters. And I wonder if it's uh, one of those situations where it's like um, some of the people's names have been changed for their privacy, like <laughs> in like a news article. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she she kind of talks about like uh having a brief encounter with this guy who goes on to hurt this other girl and then fall in love with her for whatever reason cuz men are garbage and <laughs> <First> true <off, laughs> and she still like pines for him and she's like why won't you hold me again like yikes it's a very it's a very complicated series of emotions. Some real 17-year-old emotions. <laughs> yeah, to watch yeah. to watch your friend's shitty boyfriend who like you smooched for a little bit at a dance. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, what do you think this line means? It's in verse four. So he smoked the ice and he dodged the knife. Is that a Gen Z term I don't know about? Smoking the ice? Yeah. That's cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> or crack. Uh, uh. Willa is... Smith knows about crack? Yeah, she knows about cocaine. <laughs> I'm sorry for the FBI agent listening to this episode. <laughs> Really Sorry, I like the really note that you put in our, our shared Google Doc here for the episode. Yeah. Uh, about the drink pairing. Uh-huh. Um, and the, uh, <laughs> Would you like to read it? To be fair, this album came out on Willow's 17th birthday, so there are no drinks and lyrics to pull from because that would be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and we would go to jail. And she would go to jail. Do not collect $200. Do, Do not, not pass, pass go. go. Uh, oh No is the next song. This one's sort of like a like a crisis song. <laughs> and I was really excited to talk about this one um, because it, it ties into another piece of media that I've been adoring lately. Um, but the premise of the song is, oh no, I'm falling in love. I don't want this. It hurts. I'm going to sabotage this relationship. Um, there's the lyric, I'm going to break my heart because I know you won't do it first. And it's sort of like, I'm, I'm going to cut this off before you have a chance to hurt me. Which, I get it. <laughs> I get it. That's a very, it's a very common experience. I think especially for women is um, you get worried putting yourself out there. You sometimes, you know, if you're in um, like a relationship with a man, especially a cis man, uh, it feels kind of like there's this power dynamic and maybe it's as I'm sitting in front of two straight cis men, and uh, I'm about to say, uh, because men ain't shit. Um, and a lot of the times, I think a lot of people have 
a lot of non-men have a distrust towards them and feel like um, it's going to bite them in the butt if, if they open themselves up. And this brings me to something I've been dying to talk about, like, all week. Uh, I believe both of you watched the show uh, The Midnight Gospel. Sure did. I think it's the logical evolution of what Penn Ward wanted to do Mm -hmm. with Adventure Time, but couldn't. Yeah, because Adventure Time was like, we did something also and we had a good time. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, it was totally, like, on the cusp of, like, I drop acid every day, and (laughs) when I do, I also create this television show for children. I drop acid with my therapist. (laughs) So The Midnight Gospel is a cartoon series, um, and it's sort of this hybrid between using clips from Duncan Trussell's podcast called The Duncan Trussell Family Hour, I believe. Sure. And um, it's kind of intermingled with, like, fantasy fiction TV show writing. So it'll be this TV episode, like the first one. It's an episode where he's talking to someone about the legality of different recreational drugs. And um, they'll kind of deviate from the real conversation and have this scripted part where they're like fighting off zombies. And it's so sick. And the episode that I thought of when I was... um, listening to this song, especially because, you know, I'm listening to this, I finished the series recently, was uh, episode eight. It is an old podcast episode of his where he is talking with his mom. Um, His mom, who has since that recording passed away. I've not seen this. So it's a podcast episode. Very personal, a pit out on Netflix. It is, it is. And he's interviewing his mom, who at the time um, had like stage four brain cancer, and they're talking about how much it hurts to lose someone you love. And so to watch this episode of television where they're talking about how um, at the core of heartbreak is love and uh, feeling heartbreak sucks. But if you examine it, you realize it means that you were capable of love. Um Ouchie! But that, it's what I thought of when I was listening to this. It's like, um, it seems like she's kind of trying to avoid that heartbreak, trying to avoid that, even if it means uh, really opening her heart and giving herself to this person. That's a great comparison. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank great, you very much. Way to tie like two incredibly powerful pieces of media together. Yeah, I think I think both of those two pieces of media, I don't think they're <laughs> twins, but, but uh, contextually they're sisters. Um, yeah, the next song is Warm Honey, next which song is, Warm uh, Honey. is the the uh, impetus. I looked up uh, what does words that mean? in the thesaurus it's whenever today. you can't, you know. I couldn't think of a smaller yeah. one, so I used a, a bigger <laughs> word. You know anything to me? <laughs> uh, our, our drink pairing. The inspiration. The inspiration for our drink pairing. Much better word. Thank you. Much better word. Inability to take affection ap- action. What word did you look up? <laughs> Inability for man to achieve erection. <laughs> what word did you... That's... Impotence! <laughs> That's impotence! <laughs> the gears in my head just went clang, 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 clang. <laughs> for those of us playing along at home, Zach is... He has so many strong suits and so many wonderful qualities. <laughs> Spelling and typing are not... Part no, of that I skill knew set. that was not the word. That was the joke I was making. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, warm honey. <laughs> uh, warm honey inspired our drink today. It's a very... We were talking earlier about, like, kind of croony 90s vocals. This one gave me big, like, Amy Winehouse energy. Very, like, slinky, sensual, but with a little bit of, like... Uh, self-actualization sprinkled in for flavor i i get like a very lord affectation mm. to her vocals yeah i i don't know if it's flattering though it mm. it feels a little derivative mm. um expand there i mean i think just because my brain is like these are both young artists beep, boop, beep, boop. and one of them sings like this and another one released an album afterwards yeah and probably listened to a lot of lord and maybe modeled her vocal style after lords i mean willow smith came out as bisexual and then later um either 
I, I believe she came out as pansexual, so she definitely listens to Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like she has a very Lord affectation to her singing. I could see it. I could see it. I think one of the reasons I like doing this podcast so much uh-huh. is because albums I never would have listened to otherwise, I start the week listening to it and I have a very, like, knee-jerk, like, okay, this is how I feel about the album yeah. at the beginning of the week. And I carry those feelings up until we start talking about it. Mm-hmm. And then you'll say, like, oh, well, she's this young artist, but also she has these, like, deep thoughts. And she's maybe a little bit more complicated than I would have considered a week ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm starting to come around just a little bit on this one. Thank yeah, you, my Logan, first take so was like, to be like, oh, these are, like, very, like, 17-year-old lyrics. Like, yeah. they seem a little jejune. But then after, like, hearing them explain a little more, I'm like, oh, like, this is... This is well thought out. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I have compassion for her because I was a 17-year-old girl, too. And I, I definitely wasn't. was not as, like, introspective as she was. This next song, I think, is really neat. I'm excited to hear you two talk about this uh, one. This is kind of like the, the black horse, I think, of the album. Yeah, well, okay, so I think part of what threw me off about this album is that a lot of the song structure is not very traditional. Yeah. Or... I, Part of it is the instrumentation is not very traditional, and part Mm -hmm. of it is the structure is not very traditional. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the few songs that I was able to immediately be like, okay, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. This one makes sense. It's not like (laughs) a weird... Yeah, it's got the bridge in there. there, There's drums, there's guitars. Okay, First song with a cymbal in it. Songs (laughs) sound like this. Um, But... also learned that Jada Pinkett Smith was in a band, which I did not know, and I think is very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, What type of band, Logan? They were a new metal (laughs) band in the early 2000s. They probably played shows with, like, Korn. Oh, man. Oh, that's delicious. Uh, I don't know if that's true. I like to think in my head that (laughs) Jada Pinkett Smith and Korn were, like, on the same bill. (laughs) The reason I bring it up is Mm -hmm. because this song sounds very inspired by, like, her mom's... band style of music. That's sick. I, I didn't know really that before cool. today. Yeah. You know? I was going to bring up the outro solo. Like, I want way more of that in this album. Mm. Yeah. Holy shit. You know what that what? reminds me of? I got to I gotta go for it. Uh, Zach, say what you're going to say while I get this pulled up. Uh, I pulled this from the Rolling Stone article. Uh, so she's talking about, like, a human leech... And the lines are like, you're a human leech, you're a human leech, but you're so good to me. Like she's talking about someone else. Mm -hmm. Uh, And this is the quote from the Rolling Stone that she said, the song was me looking into myself and realizing my tendencies to latch onto somebody and suck their energy. Oh. That anger that you're hearing is me being angry at myself. So it's like, whoa. Like I thought she was talking about some shitty dude. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was like, who did her dirty? Yeah. Uh, huh. But it's her own tendencies to How watch self-aware. To... Yeah. Damn. I'm, I am impressed. That's really cool. Well, I freaked out because I heard... Uh, it, it reminds me of another one of my favorite songs, and one day I'll make you talk about Dirty Projectors, but... Uh, um, I'm actually going to go see them, or was going to go see them before the world ended. Rip! <laughs> <laughs> Flop. Um, but do, are you both familiar with the song Up in Hudson? Oh, sure. It's the song exploder song. It's the song exploder Someday, song. Someday, R- Rishi K. Sherway. We're coming for you, bud. We're coming for you. Um, but it, it kind of, I feel like this song kind of devolves in a similar way where the, the guitar and everything, all the drums and everything is just fucking. It just reminded me of that. The way yeah. it's so like. I can feel it. Crusty. <laughs> <laughs> so crusty. Little, I think it's cool freeform. that the next song on this album is a Green Day cover. <laughs> <laughs> I put the same things in my notes. <laughs> um, so the song Lonely Road, which is not a Green Day cover because it's uh, three black women singing. So the exact opposite. So it's the of exact what Green opposite. Day is. <laughs> um, yeah, this song is cool. I love it. I love this song. I think it's sick. It's the uh, fuck men. I'm independent. I'm enlightened. I'm a woman. And I think um, something that really struck me about this song when I was listening to it 
was like I got the vibe that it was like you were uh, like stumbling upon like a coven's like ceremony and it's just like these three like <laughs> mystical women like doing a ritual it together. It comes in very flowery like very yeah. like decorated especially right after Human Leech which is kind of like. Yeah it's so delicate. Yeah. So feminine compared to just like a ripping guitar solo. I want to see the world through divine eyes cross the lake and fly into the sky. This is a song that made me feel like a Nicki Minaj tune. I think you said that earlier. Like Nicki Minaj? Yeah. How? Like, uh... I don't think I said Nicki Minaj earlier. <laughs> what did you say earlier? I was talking about Blood Orange. No. I was talking about Dirty Projectors. Mm, I forget already. Maybe it wasn't Nicki. But there's some vocals in there that are very, like, kind of jazzy and kind of... Oh, I I mentioned Amy Winehouse. There we go. That is so different than Nicki Minaj. No, I definitely definitely mean Amy Winehouse. I don't know why I said that. (laughs) I mean, I don't think that Nicki Minaj and Amy Winehouse are very similar people No, at all. (laughs) I guess they're both women. Log, how did you feel about this song? I don't really remember it. I got to be honest with you. Well, then let me play the second bit. I just picture I just picture women like swaying together in like flowy dresses and saying fuck men and like burning an effigy of a man who did them dirty. This <laughs> this is the song equivalent of like the end of um what's the what's the uh, the A24 movie what uh Midsummer? Midsummer. Yeah. yeah. They're all like dancing in a circle around like the maypole and there's like Spoiler alert, there's a man burning. Zach, have you seen Midsummer? I haven't. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so there's three separate women on this song um, doing vocals, and it seems like all of them are sort of taking this stance of, like, I'm here, I'm in this position, and we are just not on the same plane of existence. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and and it seems like uh, it's it's about like being okay with being alone. You'll cry without me. You'll be lonely too. But I'll have like kind of a good lonely while you're having your bad lonely. And uh, it's a big single woman energy, I think, to be happy with being single. Yeah, he, she says she walks the lonely road. It's the only road she's ever known. Uh, the chorus of this tune is actually very catchy, much more catchy than the Green Day. I agree. Because uh, I'll. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Because I'll breathe alone, I'll sleep alone, I'll eat alone, I'll laugh alone because I'm in the zone. It's like, it's it's this song I want to like clutch a bottle of red wine (laughs) and like just fist pump to it and cry and like be alone. (laughs) That's the energy this gives me. It's like, I'll eat alone and I'll sleep alone and I'll like, you're like. They also bring in a horn section that does some nice calendar melodies. I know I talked about horns a lot last episode. but I love horns. They were good horns. (laughs) They they were implemented nicely. I love horns. (laughs) <laughs> That'll be my new Twitter password. <laughs> At Sarah Vidash. I love horns. TM. <laughs> well, yeah. just wait until we we do Ska Week. We only review <laughs> Ska <laughs> albums. <laughs> and that's on Real Big Fish. <laughs> pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Um, would you guys like to move on? Sure. Yeah. Okay, we have two songs left. We're in the home stretch. DIY gang vocals. It almost sounds like Bob Marley influenced. Oh. Yeah, it is a little. Her affectation on Find a Reason almost Mm -hmm. sounds a little Marley-esque. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It sounds really, like, open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, kind of wailing in in this weird. He was in a group called the Wailers. I found. Well, how appropriate. Oh, there you go. I found the like the double on the vocals like a little distasteful, right? You think? Cause, well, because you're just like the in the beginning of the song, you're in this intimate space with her, right? It's just her and a guitar, mm-hmm. and like you're not really realizing any studio production, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, it's just like this doubling of her vocal that I think is kind of like. I want to play a bit of the end of this real Go quick. Go for it. Are you scared or you're angry? Based in fear, we all want out. Easy way. Well, okay, we'll just come again. And again, and again, and again. 
it almost feels like you're kind of being confronted by uh, a crisis and by like sort of voices in your head kind of saying like sure. there's a reason for you to be alive you're gonna die someday you can't you can't find the easy way out um these questions are just gonna keep coming back to you that that was sort of the notion I got was like chaos brain chaos yeah well and I think it it's almost aggressive mm-hmm. I think the the timbre of the guitar is jangly and not not quite um, like as processed or as produced as you would normally have, mm-hmm. and I think that kind of plays into the the chaotic sort of ag- the strumming is super chaotic, yeah. the lyrical content is chaotic, and then like the the gang <laughs> the gang the, the <laughs> gang Man, vocals. We, we, we sure do listen to a lot of Midwest <laughs> <laughs> pop punk. Um, yeah, no, I think it it all plays into how aggressive and chaotic this song is. Yeah, that would be my take. Should we uh, honor honor this album with a Rebruski? Yeah, Logan, I'd like to hear... I have a contender for a Rebruski. Mm-hmm. Um, mine is most likely to be quoted in a diary entry about a breakup. Oh, well, what I'd of, like to hear yours. One of mine was most likely to whip their hair back and forth through their third eye. That's good. Because you said that earlier. That's good. Mine was quotes from my 2014 college yearbook. I, I like whipping my hair back and forth through my third eye. Willow Smith, please please uh, come to the stage to accept your Rebruski. Um, We're giving the first by Willow, most likely to whip their hair back and forth through their third eye. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much for listening. This has been Album Rebrews. If you have a suggestion for an album that you'd like us to rebrew, please let us know. Uh, otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.